My name is Andy Frost. I help to author the resource. I'm the director of a charity called Share Jesus International that exists to support local churches in reaching their communities. I'm also joint CEO of the Gather Movement. And the Gather Movement is a network of about 150 church unity groups in towns and cities across the UK who want to see their places transformed socially, culturally, and spiritually. And if you booked um, in probably before Monday, you might have got your copy of the book in the post. If you have, give us a little wave with it. If you've got it in front of you, there you go. Good work. If you were late signing up, it might not have arrived just yet, but that's okay. It'll be in the, in, in the post to you going forwards. You'll see on the inside back cover, there's actually five different organizations that have helped to make this resource become a, a reality. It really has been about partnership. And all of us as different organizations want to help local churches and church unity groups serve their communities effectively. And the bedrock of this, this material has come from Tear Fund um, and their Discover course they launched about 15 years ago. Over the last 15 years, so much has changed. Think about smartphones and technology and uh, the needs of our places. I mean, how many churches now are running food banks is quite phenomenal, really. So things have shifted a lot. And this 5D is really a reboot, a reimagining of that material going forwards. I guess in my experience, uh, churches tend to fit into two categories. There are some churches that see all the needs in the community and often feel overwhelmed. They do a lot of talking and thinking about what they could do, but almost they aren't quite sure where to begin. And there's other churches that are more the almost activist churches. They like to get things done. And so they do stuff the whole time, but sometimes perhaps don't always think through thoroughly the issues that were involved, how we can best use our assets effectively. And the idea is this, this asset brings together some of the thinking and some of the activism to come together. So the next 45 minutes, you're gonna hear from Paul De Stringer, who is the CEO of Christians Against Poverty, on really this cultural moment and why they have partnered with this resource. You're gonna hear from Simon Hawking, on some of the big ideas in this resource. You're gonna hear from Tear Fund on where these ideas come from and how they're being used globally. You're gonna hear from two projects in the UK that have been birthed out of going through this material. You're gonna hear some next steps um, if you want to try and deliver the five Ds in your church community, in your space. And we're gonna finish with a time of prayer with Dave King from the Gather Movement. That is the plan. But at any point as we go along, if you've got uh, any questions, do put them in the chat. But first up, we're going to see a little video from Paula Stringer. Hello, my name is Paula Stringer and I am the CEO of Christians Against Poverty. And I really would have loved to have been with you all today. Sadly, I wasn't able to make it. So instead, I wanted to send this to say that we are delighted to be supporting the launch of the five Ds of community transformation. And this booklet and the subsequent, subsequent training will take you through a step-by-step -step process to discern both the needs in your local areas, but also the assets and the passions and the strengths that lay there. And then you're able to design and deliver something that draws upon those strengths and those assets and experiences to bring deep and to bring lasting change. This is about doing something with people, not simply for them or to them. And the wonderful bit is that this is all underpinned by uh, biblical reflection and studies so that as you work through this, you will be able to find that you're as transformed as anybody. In terms of the current landscape, uh, we are facing one of the deepest crises of a generation with food and fuel prices hugely increasing, obviously inflation escalating and interest rates rising, millions are scared about what the future holds. In fact, more than 10 million people are estimated to be going without heating or without electricity completely. And a similar amount are also skipping meals. Here at CAP, we are already seeing many more people contacting us for help and seeing that even after someone is debt free, they are working with a budget that simply doesn't work. Even then, they're called broken budgets. Thankfully, the church has always been at the forefront of action and compassion in the direst of times. And that from the plagues of the first century to even COVID more recently, the last couple of years. And now we are seeing it again. The church is stepping out and supporting and caring for those most affected by the cost of living crisis. And we're seeing warm welcome hubs and more cat money courses and more food bank support and other new initiatives, which is great. 
but over the last few years I have become more and more aware of the need for us to truly discern what the communities around us actually need and if you're anything like me you want to jump into action and solutions but how do we actually draw upon those strengths and those skills that already lay within our communities and within our churches without always coming up with the latest new thing you know how do we really find out what is needed and wanted rather than just rushing to do something without speaking to those who are experiencing this the daily reality and how do we underpin all this with God's love for his world and his people that transforms each and every one of us well this what you're doing today hopefully sets you up puts you on that path to do that I hope you enjoy your time together and I pray God's blessings upon you my co-author now is Simon Hawkins and giving us an understanding of really what is the five D's and what are the aims of this resource. So Simon, over to you. Thank you, Andy. And it's really good to see everybody. Uh, it's a lot of familiar faces, so it's good to see uh, you all here this afternoon. So that's right. Myself and Andy um, have been working on this um, book for uh, the last few months, uh, the five D's of uh, community transformation. And as Andy said, this is um, built upon the incredible resource that was first written, pioneered by Tear Fund, um, called the Discovery Course, which we uh, in Lincoln, through um, the work that I do, um, have been running for many, many years. So it's a great opportunity to think about how can we refresh that um, for, um, for us for today. Um, and bringing in the experience from the work that we've been doing and the experience that Andy brings and, and many of us who have really helped um, to make this what it is today. So I'm the chief exec for a charity called Axe Trust. We're a local charity, we're based in Lincoln. And so we are very much focused on our city and our place. And so hopefully that comes through in the, the material that you read that actually this is something that can be really localized and you can really drill down and think, what is it that we want to, how do we want to impact our community? So what are the five Ds? What are the five Ds of community transformation? So the five Ds are, the first one is discern. And discerning is a really important first step because um, sometimes, particularly those who are, who are, of us who are activists, we like to jump straight in with an idea that we have and we wanna just go for it and respond. And sometimes there is a need for a quick response when we see there are real urgent needs. But this first step of discern is so important because it asks us some really great questions and helps us to think about what do we actually mean when we talk about needs? When we use words like poverty, what do we actually mean by that? When we talk about things that are broken in our communities, uh, what is our understanding of that? Because really, if we want to be um, communities and churches that make a difference, that needs to come from a place of discerning, discerning and understanding what those challenges are that people are facing. Similarly, it's about really understanding and discerning what are the assets that we have. Many of you would have, would have heard of ABCD, asset-based community development, which is a really important starting point of asking, well, what is in our hands? What is it that we already have to, to our hands? What has God given to us? And how can we understand how that can be used um, to bring uh, community transformation? And equally important to discern what our role is in all of this. You know, what is our part to play? So that's a really important first step. And that's what the, the, the first D takes you through is, is that understanding and discerning. From there, we move on to discover, which is the second D. Discover, which is really about understanding your community and exploring it. This is really important from different perspectives so that we don't just think of our, our own perspective as the only perspective, but we recognize that our ideas uh, are only ideas, um, but there are others in our communities who will have their own voices that need to be heard and their own perspectives. So it's really about discovering, drilling down, what are other people saying? What are, um, what's our community saying? What are others who work in our community saying? What, um, does, what do the statistics for my town, what do the statistics for my city say? And really discovering uh, and, and building that picture, that really rich tapestry of, of discovering what is known and what is needed. From there, it starts to get very exciting because we begin to dream. We begin to prayerfully imagine what could be. 
we begin to think of solutions and dream up ideas about things that we could do to really make a difference using those assets that we've been given and to, to make an impact on the needs that we've discovered. So that's really exciting part of the process is getting to that dream. And a lot of people want to jump straight in there to that dreaming, but I do think it's, it's got its place in the process and it's certainly something that can be really enjoyed. Now those three sections together we call the exploration because it's very much about discovering, learning, exploring, having conversations, and um, getting out there and meeting people. Um, and once you've gone through that exploration um, phase, we move on to our second two Ds, which is design and deliver. And design is very much where we put some of this down and start to make a plan, start to think about uh, an action plan, how we can really think through the, the details of what it is that we, want, we want to do and how we're going to achieve it. What are all the practicalities that we need to think through? What are all the things that we need to consider? If we're gonna run new projects, if we're gonna develop new stuff, if we're going to um, think about new and exciting ways of connecting with people. Um, it's all about design that well. And then finally, the final D is then to deliver, is where we hit the ground running and we begin to see some of these things that we've dreamed about um, becoming a reality. And we begin to see some, perhaps it's going to be new projects, it's going to be developments of existing projects, it's going to be new services. It could even just be new ways of connecting with people. And so it's all about how we launch those things, how we stay on track and asking honest reflections, knowing when it's the right time to close things as well as start things. And together, those two make up the mobilization, which for, for us was a really key thing to think about. This is also about empowering your own communities, your church communities, people who, um, who you worship with, people who are part of your um, churches or church networks it's about empowering them giving them the tools and skills and knowledge so that they can be empowered to, to into their mission to make a difference in your communities community transformation is very much about our aspirations we all have aspirations i'm sure about how we can bring transformation to our communities so it's about asking those right questions and it's about empowering our churches just a little um, excerpt from part of that, just to give you a bit of a taste for some of the things that's in there. Within the discovery step, we talk about um, creating a map and creating layers um, when we think about our communities. And there are five layers that we discover. The first one is actually a physical geographical map where we even, it can be quite fun and exciting to draw out and map out our community as we see it. And Hannah, have a think about the geography of the place um, what it looks like, what it means, where, where we are in that map. The second layer on that is where we begin to discover and discern what are the needs that we see, that we hear about, things that we hear in the local news, things that we see just literally as we walk around our neighbourhoods, and um, things that we hear about. That second layer is what are the needs that we can map over this, this place. The third layer is the assets. What are the assets that are available to us in our community? What are the facilities that we have? What are the, um, the groups that exist? What are the resources we have in our hands? Even things like the knowledge and our experiences, our assets, as well as our reputation. If we've been just delivering things in the past, um, we have a reputation that we can build on of previous successes. And our third, so our third layer is our assets and how they might match up with the needs. The fourth layer then is what is it that is our passion? What is it that really, really we get passionate about making a difference? Because sometimes when we look at the, the, the vastness of need, it can feel, as Andy said at the start, it can sometimes feel overwhelming. Where do we start? We're beginning to actually ask ourselves as a community, what is it that we're passionate about that we think we want to make a difference in these areas? And that's really important to be able to do. And the fifth layer is the light. And what I mean by that is, reminding ourselves that where there is darkness, God brings light. And where there is trouble and frustrations and people are hurting, we have to believe that there is a God who brings healing and light and salvation to those situations. And we bring this as a, an important reminder to ourselves that not only does God bring light, but we too can be light carriers and light bringers into those situations. So, that's just a little bit of an, um, an excerpt for what you can expect in part of the book. I just want to explain very quickly then really for us in Lincoln how we've seen that in action. So I mentioned that many years ago we received training for the discovery course that Tear Fund ran and we found that to be such a great resource for us. 
we found ourselves meeting as a church and asking the questions, what is it that our role should be and could be? Was it things that we identified in our own town, our own city, are things that are really, really needed? And that has helped us to not only think about um, the work that we're currently doing, and, and we, even, we even thought about closing down some services because we realised we'd set them up as well-intended good ideas, but they weren't really addressing the needs of the community. Uh, and we've gone on to then since launch new things, such as um, job clubs and employability um, support, life skills training, which um, through this process helped us to really understand what it is that people were asking for and what they needed. But and more, more wider and bigger than that, in Lincoln, we are part of something called Transform Lincoln, which is um, churches together. Uh, and I know those of you connect with uh, a lot with Gather, there's a lot of talked about church unity. And for us, we set up a group um, with churches across the city um, working together and asking the questions, what would it be like if we actually could partner better? And if we're running similar projects to collaborate more and to, to work together on a shared vision for our city, we can bring transformation with one voice and one vision. And we separated ourselves into um, subgroups that were based around different needs, such as homelessness, children and young people, health and well-being, and we went through the 5D process with each group. And one really fantastic story that came out from that is there was a real um, discernment that there was, um, in Lincoln particularly, we have a high suicide rate for, uh, for young men, higher than the national average, and we thought, what, what can the church do about this? And so we began to dream through this process about something called night light cafes, crisis, mental health crisis cafes, where people could come and find the safe space in a church where they could be met with befrienders, trained volunteers, um, who would just um, make them feel very safe, loved, and someone to listen to them. Uh, and amazingly, the NHS, um, the local the clinical commissioning group, saw how organized we become as churches working together. And they thought, actually, we can connect with this group because we can just speak to one phone number and we can connect with all these churches. And so um, they heard about our plans and our dreams having gone through this process and they commissioned the churches in Lincoln to set up these nightlight cafes and that happens every night of the week 365 days of the year there is a church with a light on in the city every night of the week so that if anybody is having a mental health crisis there is always somewhere to go and it's a church isn't that wonderful and that was a, such an incredible thing that it's now been rolled out county-wide uh, and we now have around 20 to 30 um, nightlight cafes um, in process across the county and uh, and it's really exciting to see that but for us we would never have reached that conclusion it would never been through this process and so our experience is it does work and it really helps you to come to a point of really understanding what it is that you can do as churches brilliant thank you so much Simon. really helps there to understand what it's all about as a resource and we are obviously standing on the shoulders really of tier funds so uh, becky ingamels and andrew meredith jones on the call right now um, guys, can you just give us a bit of an understanding of where the discovery course came from initially, where this has been tested around the globe, and kind of where, what is the purpose of this whole idea going forwards? Thank you, Andy. Um, well, about 20 years ago uh, in East Africa, and particularly in sort of Kenya and Tanzania, um, something exciting started to happen in Tier Fund's work. Uh, Tier Fund staff started to see really broad, deep, and lasting change happening when local churches were able to see and outwork their God-given mandate, not just to bring, you know, to bring life and abundance to their communities, but not just bringing um, spiritual change, but tackling the root causes of poverty. And they were doing this through really trying to restore relationships to uh, and resulting in flourishing uh, and resilient communities. Um, so we call this work Church Community Transformation, and the discovery course that, that, that was the source of this, uh, the five Ds, was the UK version of this work. Now, sadly, Tier Fund, about six or seven years ago, uh, stopped promoting uh, and supporting UK Church in, do in, in doing this work and doing the discovery course. But I'm so glad to hear that, you know, Lincoln um, are still carrying on, uh, in the Lincoln are still carrying on. Um, now, we stopped it because we felt our core calling was to focus on low-income countries, um, but really excited, obviously, from the five Ds that, um, that this work and, and its work can really sort of start building up in the UK again. Um, see it? At the heart of our church community transformation work um, 
it's a biblical mandate that we think poverty is not part of God's plan. God doesn't want poverty, does he hates poverty. Um, but he calls us to be the local, in the local church to be salt and light in the communities that we live. And then when churches reach out into these communities and show the relentless love of Jesus, you know, hearts and minds are changed and that local churches and communities become agents for change and cause, you know, just amazing, amazing things happen. Um, and when they're doing this, you know, they see the problems that they have, they see what solutions they need, and they find the resources that they have available to themselves to really to have caused this change. Um, so Tear Fund, you know, has been doing this work, I said, over 20 years. Um, it's now, we have it in over 45 countries worldwide in low income countries. Over 24,000 churches worldwide are carrying it out in the last year. Um, it's done in a variety of settings. Uh, from majority church settings in Africa, such as Burundi and Ethiopia, to minority church settings such as Nepal and Cambodia, to even persecuted church settings such as Central Asia or Pakistan. And so I would encourage people to think, oh, think, oh, this isn't for me. You know, it can really be adapted. You know, the five Ds, you know, go through it, see what it, it can become relevant to your, to your own setting. And Tear Fund really believes that, you know, this church community work is not just one model, it's not owned by Tear Fund. The great thing is that, you know, Andy and Simon have taken on, on, on the discovery uh, literature and make, made it their own for their own situations, their own setting of the UK. Um, you know, around the world, Tear Fund has 18 different varieties of, of, of this church community work. So it's not something we've encouraged people to actually really encourage people to take it on and produce their own versions. Um, and I think the great thing that excites me is that moving forward, you know, Tear Fund has a vision to see a global church movement for the benefit uh, of people living in poverty uh, to be established and strengthened. And I see this 5Ds as a real part of that. Um, you know, we've got a big ambition to grow this work ourselves in low-income countries in the next 10 years. We hope to maybe grow this tenfold to possibly reaching a quarter of a million churches in the next 10 years. And I think what really excites me is that, you know, this kingdom building work is not just about low, you know, low, being carried out in low income countries where we maybe traditionally see where poverty is. You know, poverty is in the UK, it's all around us. And, you know, I'm just really excited that local, this, this, this material will inspire local churches to do this in the UK. So thank you, Andy and Simon, for doing all the great work on that. Um, you know, Tear Fund is just very proud and privileged to see what's come from that and just really God's blessings to everything that anyone who wants to take this up and run with it. Um, only just to say that our theology really of poverty at Tear Fund is that poverty is not just economic, it's about broken relationships, our relationship with God, our relationship with one another, our relationship with the world, and um, I've missed one, which one did I did? Ourselves and ourselves. And so even that story was so good about those young men that were struggling with suicide or the high suicide rates, because we think that it's, it's economic it's also social it's also mental health it's also about shame it's also about loneliness and so our work is very much about restoration of all of those core relationships and 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 the economy and finance is a part of that and um, there's no good somebody like having having money if they're lonely and they're not in a community so um church and community transformation what we do is very much about looking at holistic change in people's lives and engaging them spiritually socially so they're part of families i have got a story i could read to you in a couple of minutes if you've got time so um I had the great privilege of going to Rwanda this year and seeing some of our work firsthand and one of the stories that really struck me was a, a lady called Clements and I'm going to read this to you it's, it's been translated but it's in her own words so I'm not kind of just add, adding stuff to it but basically the church she was in identified that in their community that loneliness and people not in families was a massive issue because of the genocide so people of my age sort of um in their late 40s um in their 30s 40s that had their own children often weren't in families and weren't in communities because of the genocide and so the churches really recognized there's a lot of loneliness and there's a lot of isolation and groups from the churches were going out building relationship with their community and this lady clement said um before I joined this group, this is the small group from the church, she said I was hopeless because I had nothing to do. I knocked at doors to ask for small jobs and it was hard to find food for my children. My husband left me and I was experiencing a hard and bad life. The group were my neighbours and they came and visited me and told me about the hope there is in Jesus. They invited me to church. They clothed me. They came to my house after a flood and the church came and helped me rebuild my house. 
Really, I didn't know how this pastor and this church loved me. I live in a high risk area of mudslides. And when it rained, they came to rebuild my house. It was like God visiting me. She says, when I grew up, I was an orphan and now I feel like I have a family. From the Bible studies, I heard that God is love and I've seen this in the church. He, they gave me rice. I didn't know there was love in people. And when I came here, I found there was love here. They started to talk to me about how to support myself and told me about some training they were doing. And I started asking for a small loan and I, I began a small business selling fruits. And I can now feed my five children, pay for school materials and provide their basic needs. This church made my heart joyful. I used to be very sad, but now I'm joyful. And I think to me that short story just illustrates that um, listening to the needs of the community and really discovering what they are. And um, this kind of process leads to holistic change um, from, from economic poverty and social poverty and loneliness to spiritual kind of connection with God, church, communities, friendship and helping economically. So we love this material. We see it transform lives all around the world and we're loving that the UK church is kind of looking and learning from this material thanks thank you so much Andrew and Becky so great to hear that and I love what you guys are doing internationally and thank you for allowing us to use your material in this way going forward so yeah and um, Simon back over to you again Simon a couple of stories from the UK to give, give us a couple of interviews for us that would be great sure so I've invited a couple of friends um to join I'm just going to sort of very quickly interview them um who have gone through this process uh, just to give you um, some first-hand testimonies, really, of going through these steps. So, um, first of all, um, we've got Caroline Milligan from Grantham, a live church in Grantham. So, um, Caroline is here. I can't see you on my screen, but I, I, I trust you are there. Um, so, Caroline, um, perhaps you could just um, start by, um, well, say hi to everybody, and then just why why did you go through the, oh, there you are, hello. Um, why, did, hi. <laughs> why, did you, why did you go through the 5D process? Why did you decide that that was something that you and your church wanted to do? I just want to just quickly say before I start, just hearing the stories from Tear Fund and, and just, I just think it, it's such a God thing for a church community to do. And I think for us, the time was right. And we were hearing from God that there was needs that weren't being met in the community. And I um, found myself kind of in a one day a week job in the church, being the community project coordinator. And so Every, all the kind of chess piece, pieces came into place and we, we had you in our church. Well, I think it was about six or seven weeks every Wednesday morning um, in amongst a few COVID uh, mishaps and isolation things. But we, we, we knew and we felt that there were needs in the community that weren't being met. Um, some of the needs in the community were being met by some churches, but by outside organizations. And we really felt like we wanted to meet those needs um, within our church community as volunteers in our church community so that we, we kept that redemptive edge, that idea that God really wanted to do the, do the work. It's actually not us, he's just working through us. So that's why we started it. And- um, Right, and how, yeah. how did you find the process? What did you learn through that? Oh, it, it was such a lovely process. It was such a lovely opportunity for our, our group to positively think about our church and our community, uh, a fresh realization of the talents and the gifts that we had in our church community that weren't being used. Um, we also remembered past projects. And for me, who's, who's only been in our church for five years, I kind of went through the whole church history over 10 years, which I found just so amazing. And and how God has resurrected stuff that happened in the first few years in our church, wells that were dug, that were kind of blocked up over years. They've been kind of unblocked again through this process, just a real discovery of, of the journey that we've been on and then the journey that we're going on. And I think also just a fresh realization for all of us of the, the uh, desperate need in our community, poverty, brokenness, loneliness, post-COVID, mm. that, that was a, a pretty fresh realization again stark realization yeah okay and maybe you could just briefly tell us what's the outcome of going through the process and um, being what's uh, what's what's come out as a yeah. result of doing this for you so we have um as a result we have started we've launched two projects um one is called blossom we've called it blossom and it's a kind of a combination between english language classes and um craft and um 
using other talents and abilities of people. And so we we kind of brought in um, asylum seekers, migrant workers, uh, refugees who need to learn English, but we're marrying it with crafting and learning new skills so that they find it. I love what um, I think it was Becky who said it. They felt they felt they feel like I hope I'm going to steal that from you, Becky. God is visiting them every Wednesday morning. We have them in our church, and it is such a beautiful time because they learn English for an hour, and then for an hour they craft and they gather and, and they make friends and they have tea and they talk and they knit and they sew and they learn new things. And then we've also launched a project called Baby Chinos, which is for mums and and baby and toddlers. And that was a, a direct result from just speaking to midwives in the community who told us that the, the mums in COVID, the new mums have been completely overlooked. Their needs haven't been met. So we've we've kind of brought in lonely mums, mums who need to make friends, mums who've had babies through COVID and been completely isolated. And that's also a, a doing, they're doing brilliant stuff, the, the, the girls who run that. So that's what we're up to. Great, thanks. If you get a little applause I come for Caroline. I think that was really, really lovely to hear. I have to say, Caroline, it's what was great doing that process with you, of course, was um, some of those things that you talked about weren't really on your radar when we started the process. No. It was through the process of actually engaging with and talking with the community and hearing what people had to say and really learning, discerning, discovering the needs. Yeah. Um, Actually, but, that's a great point, Simon. I, we, we started the process thinking that we knew what we were going to do. And it was just so not that. It was completely different. Brilliant. Great. Yeah. That's, that's the sound bite we needed, Caroline. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, thank you so much. I'd also like to invite Paul Blundell, who is um, he's my pastor, actually, um, in Lincoln. Um, Paul, um, we recently did the Discovery course too, didn't we? And yes, we did. that was a great process. Can you just perhaps tell us Tell everybody why, why you felt it was important that, that we went through that for our church in Lincoln. Yeah, great. So um, Joy and I, Joy's on the call as well, um, planted a new location of a multi-site church in Lincoln. And um, as we moved to the north of the city, what we kind of realised was when you plant something new, there's always the excitement and the buzz and people want to start new things or do new stuff. So there's that element of like, let's get out there, let's kind of meet needs and kind of reach the community. Um, but also seeing the, the work of the, the 5D course anyway and seeing how that's worked within Lincoln, we knew that was a path that we wanted to take. But really what we wanted to do was take a, a new group of people who had planted with us um, on that journey to say, actually, how do we get not only the idea that we want to meet needs in the community and support the people but also how do we embed some values of what that really looks like um, for us as a community so it's a deeper work than just let's get out there it's kind of like a sense of let's go on a journey together for what this really looks like for us to do this well and to do this properly so uh, we we were looking to do that fairly quickly and we had the great opportunity to start that um, at the start of this year amazing yeah it was really good and how, how did people in the in the group that you, you planted with how how's everyone found going through that process what did they learn yeah i mean just a real sense of um of buzz and excitement i think for some people they they came as caroline just said with an idea this is what we should do and i think what we then were able to do was to bring those ideas together but with a sense that we wanted to prayerfully go on a journey with research, with um, looking at what the actual needs were in the community and go on a journey together, not just saying this is a nice idea, but actually what does God have for us as a community? That what are the assets for us? What are the assets in the community? How can we draw things together um, and go on that journey? So for us, the teaching and the values was so essential to get a whole group of people on the same page prayerfully discovering those things together i think the, the the course is so much fun and enjoyment as well and so there was a huge sense of um, people looking forward to the evenings and time together and um, that really brought together a team of people and so what it really felt to us was this was fun and enjoyable but at the same time we were on an adventure with god exploring what can we bring as a community and how can we celebrate what's already taking place, but begin to meet needs as well. So the whole package really came together really, really well with a sense of joy. What's the, what's the outcomes from this for, for you? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're not um, as far down the line um, as Caroline's expressed. I think the, the best outcome is a few layers to it, really. The, one of the best outcomes was um, developing a team of people that are on the same 
um, page. And within Lincoln, there are a number of projects as there are in, in many towns and cities already running, whether they can be um, food banks, community groceries, um, other bits. And we felt that actually one of our first steps needed to be that we would, as a an hour connection to some of the existing projects without trying to start something new, but actually just to strengthen what was already there. But then also to look at We've highlighted um, an area in Lincoln, um, an estate that has no community facilities, no green space, no places to gather. And so we've begun to pray for that area and asking God, what are the ways that we can bless that area? But also what, is, what are the, some of the macro, bigger picture things that God wants to do there? And we've got to highlighted a few courses through CAP and a few other things that um, we know are courses that are needed and necessary um, in, in the area. So um, we've got a few stages to it. We've got the team. We've got a sense of um, facilitating and, and, and launching into the projects that already exist, um, launching some new things um, over the next couple of months in terms of some connection points for us in the community, um, and then an area to pray for as well. And so um, it just feels like early days and early stages, but I'm so grateful to Nigel, who's on the call, who leads our team. And um, just a sense that as we've been through this process, we have a clear, really, really clear um, plan and next steps for the next year or two, at least, um, with a God-given strategy um, to help take us forward so it feels early stages but feels hugely exciting for the process we've been on great thank you so much and that's really helpful to hear that as um you know that actually it's helped you on as a journey uh, as a group and and that actually you can be uh, it's not as simple as you start at a and you end up at z you can be in, in all kinds of places in the middle but for you um knowing where you are in the journey knowing what you've got to do and where you're heading towards is so so good and to think that this process helps the group to, to reach that point is so exciting so thank you to paul as well really really grateful to you over the last half an hour the web page has now been updated and so uh, it's now got lots more information on there going forwards a couple of things first of all you can't take i'm afraid simon hawking to your church with you every single week because he'd be quite a helpful asset to have in your church but he there's only one of him right now so what we have done is try to make this resource um as easy to use as possible so you can actually take it off the shelf and use it as a church as a group that's working together and um, it's seven pounds for one copy and you can bulk buy 10 copies for 49 pounds including postage and you can do it via the web link i just posted up on the um, chat just now we've also created some powerpoint slides which can be downloaded they're free to download and we're looking as, as we go forward to create some more content um, around this to help churches explore this stuff and um, going forwards as well so that is available there and then thirdly we're also hosting a train the trainer day on the 22nd of november at a, a live church in lincoln and on that training day there'll be insights into how to use the 5g framework there'll be an opportunity to explore and experience some of the practical activities there'll be some first-hand stories of how it's been used and there'll be some ideas around best practice for how we deliver this material in our different places. So that, again, is on the link. You can follow that through, and it'd be great to have you join us for that. We thought it would be good to finish this call today with some prayer. So Dave King is Mr. Prayer, really, for Gather Movement, and does a fantastic job. And um, but just before he comes to point, I just want to thank Tear Fund and, and CAP and the Axe Trust and SGI and Gather Movement for all they've done to make this resource available thank you for, for getting hold of a copy and we'd really encourage you we've got we've got no vast marketing budget so if you can share it on social media if you find it useful share it with other people and um, let's see it's being used in around the uk to help churches think through how they can make a difference in their community but dave king over to you to, to pray for us